Deepbound is definitely the fastest way to progress in the game, just because you get an insane multiplier to the XP you get from Depths mobs. However, an issue most players have is that they end up wiping due to fighting something too strong or being ganked by a player. But by using these tips, I've almost never wiped progressing deepbound, and I'm able to max out a build in a matter of hours completely solo. So if you two want incredibly fast and safe progression, you've definitely got to watch all the tips in this video. The two best ways to not wipe is knowing where to grind and the right mobs to fight. First of all, you want to make sure you're staying near castles of light at low powers. The reason for this is because if something strong spawns and you're not confident enough to kill it, you can always lure it to Castle of Light and have the diver NPCs kill it. Now this is slower than doing it by yourself, but it is significantly safer, as if you have credit on the mob, the divers can kill it and you'll get the XP for free. Plus there's the added benefit of other people helping you kill the monsters, which is extremely useful for two reasons. The first is obvious, you're killing monsters quicker in a group of multiple people, but the second actually relates to how mobs actually spawn. You see, they don't randomly spawn around the map. In the depths, they randomly spawn around the player on a certain timer. As for how long this timer is, it seems to be random, but what I do know is if you're farming the depths in a group, mobs will be spawning near you a lot more often, as multiple people are being targeted for these spawns. Therefore, if you're farming near Castle of Light with other freshies, you're going to be seeing a lot more mobs and be able to kill them significantly quicker. Therefore, running around the depths aimlessly won't make mobs spawn and is very risky for getting yourself wiped, as you don't have anywhere to run to if you're low. As for what monsters you should be cautious of at low powers. The first is owls, just because they can do a lot of damage, cause you fall damage, and have a very good move for chasing players. The next is alpha sharkers. These guys are annoying just because of their teleport attacks. If you're running away in a panic state, it may be very hard to dodge them. So be cautious of starting fights with king thrushes are the next one, and it's mainly because these guys are incredibly hard to fight if you aren't tanky. Their breath attack and belly slam attack often catch players off guard, not to mention they deal a ton of damage and have a lot more HP than a normal Thresher. Not to mention their burrowing attack is kind of hard to run from if you don't know what you're doing, so be cautious of fighting these things far away from Castle of Light. The final thing is the Meteors event. This will occasionally happen and can cause multiple groups of mobs to spawn. The most dangerous thing in Deepbound is fighting multiple groups of mobs at once, as you can quickly be overwhelmed and killed. So as long as you're trying to only fight one mob at a time, and avoiding any monsters that you aren't confident with, you should be good. And obviously if you're more skilled at PvE, fighting these monsters will be a lot easier. But it's always best to be cautious below the power 10 mark, as that's where most people will often wipe. Now let's quickly talk about the simple flaw, as it can give you a flawless build. You may think it's bad because it reduces your overall XP, but generally up until power 15, you won't notice simple's effects at all. Past power 15 though, simple does become a real problem for getting XP. However, the best way to get levels at this point is in my opinion to just do chases, as most builds can generally clear the floor in about 15 to 16 minutes, getting a few investment points each time, and most importantly, getting passive bell prog. Not to mention having a light hook means that there is no risk of dying to chaser. Now, Vow of Thorns. Vow of Thorns is probably the biggest XP boost in the game, aside from the deep down buff itself. But in turn for a massive XP boost, every time you die in the overworld you will always go to depths. Therefore, I really wouldn't recommend using this floor on any build that's going to go to the overworld a lot, since you don't want to be getting repeated drowns. But the main thing is, you need to be extremely confident in fighting corrupt squibbos and king threshers, as the Vow of Thorns escape trial is incredibly difficult for most players. And seeing as you may have to fight a squibbo, you really shouldn't consider Vow of Thorns unless you're very good at fighting them. One final note is Hell Modes. Doing Hell Modes is a deep is the singular fastest way to progress in the game. The two main problems are you need people to turn on the hell mode belt for you and babysit you so you don't get killed by monsters. But if you're in a 
guild that does hell modes or have enough friends that can turn on the hell mode bell for you, doing hell modes for progression is incredibly fast. Although it is risky for the summer. As long as you're staying near Castle of Light, sticking with other people, letting the divers help you, not fighting incredibly hard encounters, you should be able to progress a build in the depths in a matter of hours without wiping. If you apply all these tips, you too can master farming deep bound and progress builds faster than anyone else. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out the other PvE content on this channel as I showcase the best PvE builds in the game for Layer 2s. And I'll see you all next time.